the blood transport system, moving blood around the body so we can live and also complete our activities. And we've got a couple of circulations to understand, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. And we've also got to understand how the blood vessels, the arteries, veins and capillaries differ because they have a different role to play and the fact that the redistribution of blood occurs when we do different activities. Cells require oxygen for aerobic respiration, so we need to get the oxygen to those cells. So if we're going to talk about the working muscle cells, blood is a vehicle for the oxygen to get there. It comes from the lungs because we breathe in oxygen. It's transported by the blood down to the working muscles. That's one reason why the blood transport system exists. They also remove some of the waste products and carbon dioxide is the most obvious of those because it's a waste product or byproduct of aerobic respiration and that moves from the muscles to the lungs in the blood. Uh, the blood transport system also allows us to transport things like glucose and nutrients and those hormones that allow the cells to communicate with each other. Uh, the other blood transport system effect that you uh, probably understand is the redistribution of blood that aids temperature regulation so when we get a little bit hot increase the blood flow to the external limbs uh, get that slight ready and uh, color to your skin and that allows our body to lose a little bit of heat to maintain our core temperature so carriers for our blood are our blood vessels and we concentrating on the arteries veins and capillaries they all have slight differences because of the role that they play and where that role is so our arteries have the thicker walls, that's because the blood is under the most pressure when the arteries are carrying it away from the heart. The veins have a thinner wall because they carry blood towards the heart and the blood is under less pressure coming from the muscles back up to the heart. And then we have the capillaries which have the thinnest wall because we have a passage of the waste materials and nutrients being uh, going across the membrane and they are the tiniest blood vessels in the body. As we've mentioned there are two circulations we are concerned with. The first one, the pulmonary circulation, allows the blood to be oxygenated. That means that the blood that comes back to the heart from the muscles has to go to the lungs so it can be oxygenated and then be brought back to the heart so it be, can be pumped to the working muscles. This circulation can be linked to the process of gaseous exchange and the concept of partial pressure and the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide across the semipermeable membrane, the alveoli and the capillaries in the lungs. The other circulation we're concerned with is the systemic circulation. That carries blood from the heart to the working muscles and then back to the heart. So we've got oxygen being carried to the muscle cells that require it and then we've got the waste products, so carbon dioxide being the um, byproduct of aerobic respiration that we know and that's carried back to the heart so then it can go into the systemic circulation to be, for the blood to be reoxygenated. We only have a limited amount of blood in our body, so that blood is moved around the body as and when it's demanded. That means that we have to have a redistribution of blood to get more oxygen to the muscles that require it. And if that didn't happen, we would just have to keep a state of homeostasis going, but we wouldn't be able to perform at varying intensities. This shunting of blood is controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic nerve impulses uh, constrict the flow of blood into the capillaries by vasoconstriction of the arterioles and also encourage vasodilation. So therefore the arterioles uh, are larger in diameter which allows an increase in blood flow to the capillary bed that uh, can get more oxygen to the blood tissues that, that require it. An example of this process is at the skin, where the capillaries vasodilate when we are a little bit warm. That allows blood flow to increase to the skin, which allows us to radiate heat away from the body, keeping our core temperature at the same level. This vasodilation occurs when our body temperature is increased, therefore you get a slight reddening of the skin. Another way to remember it could be the fact that we shouldn't eat just before exercise. A good way to think about that is if you have blood uh, being required by the gut in order to digest the food, there is a less than maximal redistribution of blood to the working muscles if you then go and exercise. Therefore, you can't get as much oxygen to the working muscles to perform, so therefore you'll perform 
to less than your optimum ability because you're still requiring blood to digest your food. So you shouldn't eat food just prior to exercise. So there we have it, the blood transport system. We've got two circulations we're concerned with, pulmonary and systemic. We've also got why blood is transported around the body, the vessels that we use, and also why we need to redistribute blood uh, during exercise.